Hello again, Dave and Matt from DSX Tuning. Uh, we're doing a video series to cover the Atlas port controller uh, and all its auxiliary devices and operation. Uh, this video will be specifically about closed loop operation and the dual bank wideband uh, that we sell in addition to the port controller. Um, so as far as that is concerned, uh, very capable hardware, plug and play design. Uh, we include the harness, the two wide bands, and then two uh, NTK sensors with it as well. The wide bands are the AFX3 uh, by ECM. Uh, so we're going to do a dive into, well, what is the value of adding uh, a dual bank wide band for closed loop operation and how do we add it? So I'll tee that off to Dave and he can explain a little bit more. Sure. I mean, in terms of what is the value, you know, everybody wants to know how they're engine is performing, how it's operating. When you're tuning your car, you need a wideband anyway, so you really have a true picture of what's happening. These integrate through the Atlas port controller and allow you to view everything in HP tuners. It's super seamless, but beyond that, they give you an ability to clean up some slop. So let's say, you know, your very first pull that you're going to make on your car, you have no idea if you're even in the realm of right. Sure. These yeah. are going to kind of just steer you in the right direction, as long as you're not too far off. I mean, they're going to, they're going to keep you in check to some level. Um, you know, what is that worth to people? Well, you kind of have to decide that for yourself. This setup is $1,500. Half of that is essentially the boxes, the sensors, the physical parts that, that go into this thing. You know, beyond that, we have to build a harness that has the integrated relay, the fuses that are needed to trigger this thing. The boxes are actually carry quite a bit of work. We have to disassemble <laughs> them. We have to seal them <clears throat> well, so that disassemble, they survive. Yeah, disassemble them. Uh, we have to program them, add yep. jumpers in the correct place, put them back together, seal them. Uh, and if you've ever played with RTV or, uh, or anything like that, it gets everywhere. Yeah, it's, yeah. so uh, that's a big part of it. And when we say program, we mean literally we have to program every single one of these. There's a, a series of steps that we have to go through to set the CAN data correctly on these and identify whether they're a bank one or a bank two. The harness is all uh, pre-configured, so literally you match wideband one to connector one, and then sensor one will plug into sensor one, uh, so on and so forth. Everything's pre-configured. Uh, so to be clear, if you are a shop and you are diagnosing a car, you can't swap parts here and there or the other place. That whole setup stays together, uh, you know, until it's end of service. So that'll be, be together forever. The best part about it is that it's plug and play. Yep. So why don't you explain what that looks like? I mean, that's it. That's it. So that's it. <laughs> you plug this connector into here. So this, this already exists on your Atlas harness. And the way that the controller is programmed is if it doesn't see the CAN data, it just doesn't run closed loose. So this connector here that Dave pointed out is part of the main harness for the Atlas port controller. So you can install your wideband setup, plug it in, and you're good to go. From there, closed loop begins and, and, and you're set. So A, the installation, incredibly easy. The hardware is very robust. Um, what else makes this better than anything else on the market? Well, it's all model-based control. So this kind of goes back to the core function of the Atlas and knowing what the system as a whole is doing. So you know, now you've got these two separate fuel systems married, working as one. We see everything that's happening. So everything is based off of feed forward coming out of the factory ECU. We have this total picture of what's going on, and that allows us to make appropriate corrections regardless of what contribution the port system is making to the whole system. So, you know, if, if we know the whole system is 5% lean and we're only at 40% of the total fuel delivery, we, we know how to quickly make up that difference. And it, it does it totally seamless. The, the global data aspect is very useful here. With all that said... The equipment that we're using, obviously uh, ECM making the AFX3, uh, it's OE grade components, which attributes to some of the cost. 
Uh, but I think a big part of what we've touched on in this whole series is that data and the items supplying you the data are super important. Sure. And I mean, to go a little step further with that, talking about just the closed loop function in general, I mean, it, it's a weird topic because everybody thinks, oh, it's just, it's, it's lean, add. Well, okay, put that into code and make a computer do that for you without overreacting or underreacting. And there are hurdles in doing that. And that's why this has, uh, we, we actually have a phase lag detection built in where this thing can learn what the delay is from the injection of a change to when the sensor responds so that we're not overcorrecting in the meantime. We have fuel cut detection. We talk about this elsewhere where the controller knows when the ECU is demanding fuel cut, which introduces an astronomical amount of noise into the system. And this knows when to ignore that and stop trying to, you know, pour a bunch of fuel in because suddenly your wideband says, oh my God, this is super lean. Like, it's all very well thought out, and just everything's been selected to be very purpose-made, purposefully done. I mean, th this is ultimately the result of a control systems engineer writing code as opposed to a coder trying to create a control system. You know, nobody just went and Googled, you know, <laughs> Arduino PID control loop library. Like, that's, that's not what this is. There's, there's a lot into this. So, <clears throat> touching on the hardware and that it's a purpose-built piece, to be very clear, so the dual bank wideband system is specifically for the Atlas port controller. Yep. Your existing wideband can still exist. Uh, it will not be interfacing with the Atlas port controller. It will exist in its own realm wherever you have it set up. Uh, you know, if you're viewing it in, in HP tuners or on a gauge or whatever that might be, if it's an analog input, uh, you can keep that. But to be clear, uh, any other aftermarket uh, widebands and things like that, single wideband also not available. Um, this is specific to the Atlas port controller. You can keep your other stuff. Uh, but we will not be retrofitting any of your existing equipment uh, to work with the Atlas port controller. Uh, that's just to keep a control uh, well, of what's happening. Everybody wants to know why. You know, why can't I use my AEM wideband or this, that, or the other, you know, whatever. Like, we don't have a way to authenticate the information we're receiving from that with any level of definitive reliability. Like, we want to stick to what we know is good. And that's, you know... That, that goes even further into why this closed loop system just is as functional as it is. It, it just works. You know, we, we take all of this data into consideration. And we, I know we talked about this earlier where, you know, we're operating in a divorced bank system. So bank one and bank two are treated completely individually. We trim to both. And I mean, I'll tell you, there's, there's cars even in stock form that have variations bank right. to bank. We, yep. we kind of clean that up. Let's say one wideband goes down. You know, you ran over a piece of debris on the highway and it cut the wire to the sensor. The box is going to report an error. We're going to pick that up and we're going to say, oh, hey, bank one wideband's dead. All right, well, we're going to use bank two for everything now. Now, let's say you drive over that same piece of debris and you cut the other one. Yeah, everything's decimated. <laughs> yeah. Now we shut the whole thing down. You're in open loop. And that's all automated. It, it happens instantly. There's no delay. We're not going to drive some crazy correction. I mean, it, it just does what it's supposed to because it's all just intelligently thought out. And, you know, to take that a step further, talking about just thought out, we have a dual fuel mode option in the controller that allows you to override what type of fuel the Atlas is making calculations on. So in normal operation, it runs synchronous. We assume that the fuel in the DAI system is the same as the fuel in the port system. <clears throat> you can forcibly separate that, and you can tell the controller, no, I actually have methanol. Here's my stoic value. You connect a pressure sensor specifically for that system. This closed loop system will still function with that. You know, let, you got gas in your DI system, you got meth in the port, Everything still works. And again, it goes back to that model-based control. We know the total system. We know what to expect. We know what's going in. It goes a long way. I, I think the, the next piece is, if you've already bought your Atlas uh, port controller, and you say, man, closed loop sounds really good right now, uh, you can add it seamlessly. Literally just plug it in. 
Um, it, from there, uh, obviously, other than making tuners' lives easy, uh, is there anything else you want to add as to the operation? No, I mean, it's, it's pretty straightforward. Uh, it doesn't matter if you're making 700 horsepower or 1,700 horsepower. You don't have to sit here and tweak it based on, you know, what the port system is doing. It'll work for everybody. Uh, at the moment, if this video made you say, man, I really got to have that, uh, we are waiting on wide bands at the moment. Uh, we're waiting on sensors, uh, I believe, at this point. Sensors so, are the big hurdle right uh, now. The hang-ups for a lot of this stuff is obviously it's really nice to have everything be plug and play. Uh, this takes a lot of man hours. And we've been keeping up with demand pretty well at this point. Wideband harnesses are probably one of the more difficult due to their length and complexity. Uh, and having to fish a lot of stuff uh, through multiple yeah. loos. Uh, yeah, really nicely uh, built stuff here. Uh, so as far as, uh, you know, approximate lead times, things like that, we're just taking them in the order in which they're received. Uh, but otherwise, uh, I think that about covers uh, closed loop operation, unless you want to add anything. No, I mean, it just... It does exactly what it's supposed to do. And, you know, the, the functionality will not change when we eventually introduce the onboard Bosch sensor control. It'll, it's all still going to function just the same way. Uh, so, again, when that part is offered, uh, you know, down, down the road map, obviously we have boost control coming. We'll have the onboard widebands coming, the fuel pump control. Uh, you did say the onboard widebands will require your Atlas port controller, just the unit itself, to come back to us. Uh, if you're going to make that upgrade. That's right. Um, so other than that, I think that's where we'll wrap this one up. Uh, if you have any questions, Dave at DSXTuning.com, Matt at DSXTuning.com. Uh, otherwise, we'll follow up with this one with another video. Uh, if you have any questions, please reach out.